Now at six, after years of criminal activity, fires and medical emergencies, we'll tell you what's happening now to this abandoned property. Plus, Election Day, four days away now. County District 4 candidates going head-to-head -head in our studio to discuss the housing crisis. Lemon Grove was identified as the only city in the entire county that met the housing, affordable housing requirements. I speak with Lemon Grove's mayor about affordable housing in her city. We know that everything is rising, rents, food especially. Saving produce to feed San Diegans in need. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Good morning, San Diego. So glad you're with us here on this Friday morning. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Thank you for joining us. And, you know, we're a day away from the weekend, yes. of course, and things are starting to cool down a little bit. So as you're making your plans, let's check in with Evan and oh, What's so going close. on? Hey, so we're cooling down a bit, but like we said, it's just a very minor blip in temperatures. I mean, it was a hot start to the week about Monday through Wednesday. Even Thursday yesterday was a hot one. Yesterday we started to see those temperatures cool a few degrees. We made it to 82 along the coast. Today we're going for upper 70s or so as we look along the coast. 82 inland, so it's still going to be pretty warm out there. 75 for the mountains and 87 for the desert. It's a lot of sunshine and just a few passing clouds that we're working through. Coming up, we'll talk about what to expect into the rest of the weekend and next week as that cool down will be felt much more into next week. We'll finally start to uh, get back to the 70s for our inland valleys, so that'll be a, a notable adjustment. Back to you. Evan, thank you. This morning, the owners of a vacant property in Little Italy deemed a nuisance are getting demolition plans ready. This property right here, the city, city reached an agreement with the owners yesterday afternoon. CBS 8's Regina Yorita live in Little Italy to explain why this building needs to get demolished. Good morning. Well, Netta and Eric, we were just at that property um, a, a few minutes ago and we had to move for safety because we actually saw somebody break into one of those uh, properties and that's been the ongoing issue in that area. Now, part of the issue about that property is that the owners haven't been actively monitoring the site. So after a dozen police calls about the site and even a lawsuit against them, the owners have agreed to have it demolished. Over the last four years, San Diego Police Department has responded to 44 calls that include disturbing the peace and drug use. There's also been lots of trespassing. The fire department has had to put out fires at the property. At one point, they even had to provide medical assistance to a person who broke into the property. That person is now dead. The city attorney's office filed a lawsuit against the owners. It asked the owners to agree to have the property demolished. In a recent statement, San Diego City Attorney Mara Elliott says, sadly, this property has become an eyesore and a safety threat with San Diego police frequently responding to reports of crimes being committed at that site. This agreement will put an end to that activity so that our neighbors and visitors can once again frequent this neighborhood without fear. So to settle this case, the property owners have agreed to the demolition to settle it. Uh, they've agreed to pay nearly $4,000 in investigative cost and 200,000 in civil penalties. Now back here live, the owners won't have to pay half of those fines if they uh, make sure to keep the property trash free to secure the area and also to hire a security guard uh, prior to the demolition. I'm live in Little Italy, Regina Yurita, CBS 8. All right, Regina, thank you. Glad you're safe where you are now. And now in just a couple of hours, former San Diego State football player Nolan Iwaliko expected to be sentenced. The hearing is sentenced, uh, set, I should say, for 1.30 this afternoon. The 20-year-old pled guilty to possessing child pornography earlier this year. This stems from a previous investigation into an alleged gang rape of a 17-year-old girl back in 2021. During that investigation, police say they found child pornography on an Apple iCloud account linked to Iwaliko. Right now, he faces up to three years in state prison. And now, this just into our newsroom here, 150,000 jobs were added in October. The unemployment rate went up to 3.9 from 3.8%. The Labor Department released these numbers just about 30 minutes ago. Economists say the auto worker strike probably shrank last month's job gain by at least 30,000. That strike is now over.
They are the hot button issues on this Tuesday's ballot. Crime, homelessness, the migrant crisis, and our housing crunch. On November 7th, this Tuesday, District 4 voters will decide between Monica Montgomery Stepp and Amy Reichert for the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. The winner will fill Nathan Fletcher's vacant seat until 2027. As the special election gets closer here, I sat down with Monica and Amy to discuss several pressing issues on the minds of voters in District 4. In our 5 a.m. hour, we showed you Part 3, where both candidates share how they would handle the ongoing border crisis. Now we want to show you part four. I asked them about the housing market here in San Diego, and here's what they had to say. Let's discuss housing now. San Diego, the most expensive place to live in the U.S. We were number one on the list by U.S. News and World Report. They based it on the cost and housing of housing and rent. According to their analysis here, the median home price, $919,000. Median rent, $1,800. Number two on the list was Los Angeles, followed by Honolulu. Monica and Amy, what needs to be done to make our housing here more affordable? Monica, we're going to start with you. Yes, we need to build more housing and we need to build more housing in all levels, low income and middle income especially. We have to use public land in order to be able to do this. It reduces the cost of building units, but we also have to invest in first time home buyers, folks who want to stay and live here and keep their talent here. This really is about increasing our units on the market and ensuring that our people here who have built this region have the opportunity to stay in San Diego. Amy, your thoughts on our housing crisis? Since 2020, according to county data, 50,000 people have left San Diego County. And when people are leaving, they tell me, Amy, you know what? I just want to go someplace where I can afford a single family home. San Diego County has completely failed on this level by not building what people want in the past 20 years. As a result, what we've been seeing is huge swaths of homes that are built in Southern Riverside, which are really detrimental to our environment and clogging up the 15. Let's build sensibly and also take care of our environment and build what people want so that they can stay and thrive right here in San Diego. A reminder to our viewers, this special election for District 4 is November 7th. If you haven't voted already, please cast your ballots. Voting centers are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day until November 6th. To watch the discussion in its entirety, go to CBS8.com. And as always, here at CBS8, we strive to bring you balanced, informative coverage on the major issues impacting our community. And we're going to continue that conversation about housing later this hour. Coming up, we'll take you to Lemon Grove, where I asked the mayor about affordable housing and why Lemon Grove is a leader in that coming up at 630 this morning. We do have an update this morning on the vegetation fire near Camp Pendleton. Right now, smoke advisory remains in effect near the base and will continue till tonight. As of the last update at 5 p.m. yesterday, the fire has so far burned through about 7,000 acres. Right now, it's about 50% contained and is not threatening in any buildings or people. This morning, we are also continuing to track the Highland fire. This is the one in Riverside County. At last check, the fire now 40% contained. The fire remains around 2,500 acres burned. Cal Fire says the flames have burnt down at least seven buildings, including two homes and damaged six. One firefighter was hurt. The cause is still under investigation. And now get ready to lace up your shoes, maybe with pink shoelaces. The More Than Pink Walk is happening this weekend. It's a 2.4 mile walk along Balboa Park. Beautiful spot for this. It's all hosted by Susan G. Komen. Thousands impacted by breast cancer will come together to raise money for research and financial aid. CBS 8 is a proud sponsor, so come check out our booth. You'll see many of us walking. The walk is happening Sunday, Balboa Park. It starts at 8 in the morning, and you can register by going right here, cbs8.com slash community. And now let's send it over to Evan to see what the weather will be like for all of the walkers, the sea of pink, Evan. So uh, I didn't even realize and I'm wearing pink today. Works out perfectly. Maybe I'll wear this on Sunday as well. Uh, we'll be out there, at least I will be out there with a bunch of our CBS 8 team and uh, we're expecting that it will be a cold start to the morning and then a warm afternoon. So the walk starts at 8 a.m. That means from 7 to 8, that morning stretch, if you're out there, it is going to be on the colder side. Uh, most days this week we've seen that stretch 
around 50 degrees or so. Right now we're at 51. Gives you a good indication of what to expect into the rest of the mornings to come. But what we are going to watch for for the next several mornings ahead is an increase in cloud cover. We do currently see some clouds offshore, which is a welcome sight because for the last several mornings that has not been the case. We've had those offshore winds keeping us very, very dry and preventing that cloud development. So we're welcoming those clouds and clouds can actually help to keep our overnight lows a bit warmer. Offshore winds, but we're holding on to more of that northerly component. Expected to see onshore winds reduce, uh, continue by the afternoon. Uh, they'll return into the rest of the day. So Santa Ana's are done. They are no longer a threat here in San Diego for uh, at least the foreseeable future. But we'll keep tabs on possibility of those winds returning. We know they never die down for too long. It's always something to watch for. 42 right now in Oceanside, 46 in Escondido, 49 in Poway. We've got sunshine across the county, but again, just a few clouds that are starting to build to start off the day, including in downtown at 53, Chula Vista at 55. So cold mornings, warm afternoons. But here's the thing for the days to come, we're going to see those warm afternoons decline a bit in their afternoon highs. So take a look from today, Friday at 81. That's the warmest we've got for the next 10 days. We'll drop down to 71 by about Tuesday and then all through next week. Temperatures are close to average, kind of hugging average, partly cloudy skies, marine layer rebuilds each night. And then by the afternoon, we've got a lot of sunshine on hand. Let's check in on traffic. It's 611 on the clock right now. No major crashes or collisions. As we look at our traffic maps, you've got green across the screen. We'll keep you up to date here. Let's check in on border wait time. See how those are looking as we start off the morning. San Ysidro port of entry, a 50 minute wait. Otay Mesa port of entry going to take 70 minutes, about an hour and 10. Again, more is on our website, cbsa.com slash traffic. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. And still ahead here, the Israel Hamas war having wide ranging impacts here at home. We'll tell you about the free legal help for Jewish and Muslim Americans in San Diego. When I lose an hour of sunlight at the end of the day after work, I don't like that. We fall back this weekend. The health impacts of daylight saving time.